Hey there, today I wanted to share with you my top eight favorite watercolor colors. Now, most people will do it from eight and then work upwards, but for this video, I am gonna do it from my top color and work my way downwards. And that's just because if you've been with this channel for a while, you guys already know what my top two colors are because I talk about them all the time. So I didn't think that would be as much of a thrill to wait for those two colors. So I'm gonna start off with my top two favorite colors and work my way downwards. So we start off with my absolutely favorite, favorite color in the whole wide world. And that is the Quinacridon Rose by Daniel Smith. I just love this color so much. It's just a perfect, pink for me and it is the perfect cool red for me it is so bright and intense but it's not too cold and it's not too warm it's just spot on i've tried a lot of quinacridone roses and i still stand by that daniel smith is my favorite quinacridone rose According to Daniel Smith's website, Quinacridone Rose, with its red velvet color, lends itself to fabulous purples. Try with indigo for deep, dusty purples, or in danthrone blue for rich, clear purples. Quinacridone Rose can be mixed with Quinacridone Sienna or burnt orange in dilute wash states to create flesh tones or convincing sunsets. Highly durable and extremely transparent, all the Daniel Smith's Quinacridone colors excel in vivid clarity and intensity. It is made out of the pigment PV19, that is the Gamma Quinacridone. It is excellent in light fastness, transparent, medium staining, and non granulating. My second favorite color in the whole wide world would have to be the Quinacridone Turquoise by Daniel Smith. It is such a rich jewel tone and it mixes beautifully with the Quinacridone Rose as well. To me, it is the perfect Thalo Turquoise. I really do like turquoise colors, but I in particular like the Thalo Turquoise because it's such a rich color. It, you can get turquoise anything from a light blue to this deep turquoise and i really really like this deep turquoise and it goes so well with the quinacridone rose as well daniel smith's website says it moves from a deep dark turquoise to a thin film of robin's egg blue in a single wash making a remarkable transition from ground level to sky areas of garden florals Use this pigment alongside purples or to paint a lake in summer. It is made out of the pigment PB15 colon 3, which is the beta copper thalo cyanine, and that is your basic thalo blue green shade. And it also contains PG36, which is chloral brominated copper thalo cyanide, which is your thalo green. It is classified as excellent in light fastness, transparent, highly staining, and non-granulating. And in the third spot, I have quinacridone coral. Quinacridone coral is a new color to me, but I have come to appreciate this color so much since I've been painting floral paintings. And the quinacridone coral, it's the perfect base to start off painting a warm, peachy, corally colored flowers in terms of having it on your palette if you don't paint florals or paint with lots of different shades of pinks and reds then you probably don't need this color because quinacridone rose is a really good pink place to start off with and you can easily make a corally color by mixing some yellow to that but for me, when I paint flowers and I want to show different shades of the pinks and corals and things and different temperatures coming through in those flowers, then having this quinacridone coral is so handy and it saves me so much time. 
it is also a much softer quinacridone color so it's not so in your face like the quinacridone rose is. Daniel Smith says a treat for the eye of both painter and viewer this intense quinacridone color is a clear red tinged with pink and orange highly durable and extremely transparent all the Daniel Smith quinacridone colors excel in vivid clarity and intensity. It is made out of the pigment PR209 and that is a quinacridone red. It is excellent in light fastness, transparent, low staining and non-granulating. Next up we have the color Bordeaux. When I first bought a tube of Bordeaux and put it on my palette and dipped my paintbrush into it and touched a watercolor paper, I just fell immediately in love with this rich royal purple. It is such a strong vivid color and it has so much punch to it that it will stand up quite easily against a quinacridone violet and in fact I did a comparison video between the Bordeaux and quinacridone video earlier in in season two of Daniel Smith if you fancy checking out the difference between the two. Now I like really punchy strong colors in my palette so this is perfect for me. It has a depth that the quinacridone violet slightly lacks in. The quinacridone violet is flatter, whereas the Bordeaux has that depth that you will see in a glass of a Bordeaux red wine. Daniel Smith says, a durable staining azo pigment, Bordeaux is a velvety wine color. It's slightly granular, semi-transparent properties work well with blotting, misting and salt application techniques. Replace lifeless muddy mixtures with this pigment. Try painting a scattering of cranberries with Bordeaux mixed with small touch of antiquanoid red or French ultramarine. Blot highlights and when dry add details such as blossoms or stem ends of berries. Then add connective shadows. It is made out of the pigment PV32, Benzimidazolone Bordeaux. It is classified as very good in light fastness, which is one down from excellent. It is semi-transparent, medium staining and non-granulating. Next up, in the fifth position, I have Marine Blue by Holby. This is basically another Thalo Turquoise, but it is a different Thalo Turquoise and the colors are different. This is a cooler Thalo Turquoise and it is also made out of a single pigment instead of the combination of two pigments that the Daniel Smith version of the Thalo Turquoise contains. I actually came across this Thalo Turquoise or the Marine Blue as Holbein likes to call it before I encountered the Thalo Turquoise by Daniel Smith. Since I met the Thalo Turquoise by Daniel Smith it has been knocked down a peg or two just because of the warmth of the Daniel Smith. I really like that but the Marine Blue by Holbein is just as beautiful a colour. And it is more of a marine blue as in you can kind of imagine this color existing in the sea more than the thalo turquoise. The thalo turquoise is very green whereas the marine blue is a lot bluer. Now Holbein doesn't produce lovely romantic text about their paints. They just give you the paint and the facts and that's it. But it is a lovely, lovely, really strong punchy thalo turquoise and in some ways it is more of a turquoise that I certainly imagine than the thalo turquoise by Daniel Smith because it is more right in the middle of the colors between blue and green whereas the Daniel Smith thalo turquoise as I said before leans a lot more towards the green. It is made out of the pigment PB16 which is metal free thalo cyanine it is classified as three out of four stars in light fastness. It is a non-granulating and transparent color. In the sixth position, we have Thalo Blue Yellow Shade by Holbein. 
I love this blue so much. I'm a big fan of all the blue colors, as you might have guessed, but this color just makes me happy. It's just such a warm, tropical blue color that it makes me smile when I paint with this color. You can totally imagine a warm, sunny sea that is of this color, maybe in Hawaii, maybe somewhere tropical. It is definitely, it is definitely going to be a warm holiday destination. As with all the other colors that we've seen so far, it is a nice, punchy, bright, bright, highly tinting color, which you know I love so much. I know some people I know some people hear the word thalo blue yellow shade and wonder if that's a different shade of thalo blue from the thalo blue green shade and red shade, but don't panic. Holborn calls it thalo blue yellow shade, but it is actually the same color as a thalo blue green shade. Now Holbein only lists the pigment as PB15 but because it's the same shade as a thalo blue green shade with some confidence I can take a stab at guessing that it is going to be a PB15 colon 3 which is your beta copper thalo cyanine. It is classified as 3 out of 4 in light fastness. It is a non-granulating semi-transparent color. In seventh position, we have Aurelium by Holbein. This is such a bright, happy, cool yellow that I don't think I've ever made a palette without it because I love having a good, cool yellow. I have already made a video, which I will link to the top right hand corner of this screen, talking about the light fastness of Aurelian colors in general, because the genuine Aurelian has serious light fastness issues. So if you want to check that out, do check out that video. But this Aurelian by Holbein is light fast. You don't have to worry about it. It's full of Azo colors, so it's not going to go anywhere in any kind of hurry whatsoever. It is an Aurelian hue, as in it is mimicking the color of Aurelian using different kinds of pigments. And in this case, they use three pigments, PY154, which is benzimidazolone yellow, which is a like an azo yellow, medium or light. PY175, which is benzimidazolone yellow H6G, which is your Windsor lemon. And then PY150, which is nickel azomethine yellow, which is your basic nickel azo yellow. So lots and lots of azo yellow. It's not going to go anywhere. I did a six months light fastness test and it did not shift at all. Holbein classifies this paint as three out of four in terms of light fastness, but Holbein has a strange way of classifying their light fastness. And it's, it's a little bit more stringent than I think some other brands. I will make a video about that sometime later on discussing how the Holbein light fastness test system works. But from doing my own light fastness, I found that if it's three out of four, you're not going to have any problems whatsoever. So I would not worry about the fact that it's three out of four. It is a non-granulating transparent color. And finally, in the eighth spot, we have Transparent Red Oxide by Daniel Smith. This color was requested to me to test during the Daniel Smith Color Showdown Season 1, which I will link the episode to to this video as well. And I am so glad that somebody suggested to test this color because this color is fantastic to have in your palette. It is one of the best mixing colors I have seen, closely followed by the transparent brown oxide. It plays along so nicely with every color you throw at it. It's not much of a color I know on its own, but mix it with any color in your palette and it creates this most rich jewel tones that are just just fine and gorgeous. Daniel Smith's website says, a highly transparent burnt orange loves to mingle with lamp black, settling in beneath it, mix with it to create tones of cinnamon and tobacco. Fire seems to dance on the walls as its peach undertone nestles in with the black. Incredibly warm and non-staining, you can create stunning effects. 
glaze it over the French ochre for a warm fireside glow or layer it over itself for a rich and glowing red ochre that has no equal. I kind of feel like that description doesn't do it justice in how good this color is at mixing with other colors. But if you want to experiment with jewel tones but you don't want to buy jewel tone colors because maybe it's just a phase you're going through, then I recommend buying a tube of this or a transparent brown oxide if you want to go even darker and then creating those jewel tones by mixing with the colors you already have on your palette. It is made out of the pigment PR101, which is your red iron oxide. It is classified as excellent in light fastness, transparent, non-staining and granulating. If you would like to have a play with my top eight favorite colors in a whole wide world, then I have created a dot card for you. This dot card will be available for anyone that signs up to my Patreon this month on the appropriate tiers. There is three different tiers in which you can sign up to receive a dot card. And I have put huge dollops of my favorite eight colors on these cards so that you can have a play with them to your heart's content. As you can see, they're not really dot cards and my patrons always have a laugh that no, they're not really dot cards. They call it more like line cards. <laughs> but it should give you plenty of paints to really, really test it out, mix it with other colors, mix it with the colors you already have on your palette to find out whether it's something that will work with your palette before investing in a whole tube. You need to be signed up by the 30th of September to receive this particular card. I hope you enjoyed finding out what my favorite colors are in the whole world. It's certainly been a pleasure to make a video about the colors that I love so much and I hope you guys like these colors as well. If this video was interesting to you then please do give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below what your favorite color is. I would love to hear all about your favorite colors. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye!